In today's communication skills for women training video, you're going to learn three phrases to eliminate from your professional verbal repertoire. These phrases that I'm going to give you today are much more commonly used by women and changing them will change the relationship you have with everybody, including yourself. You ready? Phrase number one, literally, 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 literally. <laughs> Remember that the word literally has only one purpose and one meaning. And that is to alert the listener, or the reader, or the recipient of this message that the words that I'm about to say, I'm saying it in a literal sense, as opposed to the way people normally use it. If that's not what you're doing, if you're not telling somebody, oh, just so you know, I'm, you know, this, the phrase green with envy, you know, Marsha was literally green with envy today. The only way I could be saying that correctly is if I'm saying, number one, that Marsha is so jealous of me and my word skills that she spontaneously transformed the pigmentation in her skin to reflect only green, and now she looks like the Wicked Witch of the West. That's one way. Or, let's say that Marsha has a friend named Envy, and it was Bring Your Friend to Work Day, and on the way to work, they passed by a chalkboard uh, factory and got too close, got some overspray on them. I could then say, what's the, did you see Marsha today? She literally came in green with Envy. <laughs> That's the only way. Otherwise, remember, this is commonly misused in a couple of different ways. Number one, people will use it for emphasis. That's not the way we use literally. If you want to emphasize something, know how to emphasize something correctly. And to say, for example, oh, it was horrible in today's meeting. When Mark got the news, he literally exploded in front of everybody. Hi, I'm Mark. Today I'm going to be... What? Yeah, thanks. What news is? What? What's going on? Hold on. Oof, his exploding on everybody today and losing control like that really showed how much it impacted him when he received today's news. When people stop to concentrate and hang on your every word, it is because you have taken the time to craft messages that are worthy of people's attention. And the way you do that is structure your sentences for impact. And the more you practice it and have your visual cues around, the more it will flow out so that I can, instead of saying something like the average person, he literally exploded in today's meeting when he got that news. Did you see that? Mm, mm -mm. Yeah, no one is picking them for next in line as the company's spokesperson, manager, leader, CEO not happening. Structural changes that you can on the fly incorporate into your messages make the difference. Those are the details that make people go, geez, because you know how when we watch people communicate, there are some people as they speak, we're just transfixed and we think, what? Where did you learn how to communicate? What? How, how can I talk more like you? But we can't put our finger on it because we don't really know what those little nuances are, those things that are making that message so powerful. The structuring of sentences, that is a huge deal. You want to focus on that. That's not for this lesson, okay? So I don't want to distract from my message by making common mistakes that people make when they don't honor the people with whom they communicate by investing in the quality of the message that they deliver to them. When people do that, when people invest in the communication training and their communication skills, what that overall says to the listener is, I honor you so much that I've invested even before I knew who you were in this conversation. And that's how important I believe these words I'm speaking to you are. And you'll notice that when I speak them to you, not only do I do it correctly, I'm going to be compassionate with you as well and mindful and loving as I do that. That is what's going to separate you from everybody else. If you can infuse your communication with that. And if you have been struggling your whole life with communication and you don't want to make some changes, but you want to be a new communicator, check out my VIP package at danoconnertraining.com and I will help you do that. No matter what your budget is, if you have any challenges getting something that I'm offering, but you need it, let me know and I will make sure that you get it. And stop using words like stupid. <laughs> okay. Stupid is word number two, especially at work. Remember, if I'm going to be saying, I think that'd be a stupid idea. Oh, that was a stupid thing to do. Don't make these stupid mistakes. If I'm communicating something at work, it should be with the final 
intention or the final result of benefiting me, my team, this company, its image, its professional development. And when I use words like stupid, not only is that not doing any of those things, it is not constructive or loving or compassionate to the people around me who are all struggling living every single day of their lives, especially in my personal life. There are very rare cases where I want to use the word stupid. Instead, what do I really mean? You know, if instead of saying, I think that was a really stupid thing to say. The message not only is changed, but has value and is more precise. If I were to say something such as, I think that was a hurtful thing to say. I think that would be a reckless path to take. I think that would be a short-sighted decision if you made it. I think that would be a thoughtless thing to do. That was a careless thing to do. That was a poor choice of words. And I believe that it really projects a careless, reckless attitude of somebody who is ill-informed on the issues and insensitive to the people around him. When you say that, you look very exclusionary rather than inclusive. You might want to consider that. So eliminate that word stupid and you'll look less dumb. Okay. Remember, the moment you found value in this video, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And the last word <laughs> is so, so good, so good. So very, very, and really, really. Those words, so very, really, remember that women say those infinitely more than men do. And men, we have, I believe, many more in quantity <laughs> and gravity communication challenges that women do. These that I'm talking about today simply happen to be things that are mistakes women make more than men. And you need to stop. Instead of saying so or really or very, try this the next time you want to emphasize something. Put what the evidence is that you're using to emphasize what it is that you're emphasizing first. And then put what it is you're emphasizing last. Instead of saying, oh, these meetings are so boring. We never get anything done. This is such a waste of time. Okay. Well, I believe that the what appear to be scars or maybe folds, but are actually a testament to, or maybe one might call them a stigmata that reflects the depth of suffering that I have to endure week after week when I sit through and have to put toothpicks in my eyes to hold them up, which is where those scars come from. Because I have to sit through and endure these boring meetings. <laughs> right? So there you go. Or I could say, these meetings are so boring. So boring. Uh, meetings are so boring. You know, if I were to say, these meetings are so boring, that structure is just horrible. People are like really taken away with your messages when you know how to structure them correctly. Okay? For everyone here at Dan O'Connor Training, this is Dan O'Connor, signing off.